welcome back to the shop, everybody. Um, right up front, let me apologize because I actually worked on this project a couple days ago, but when I originally filmed the intro segment, there was apparently a problem with the camera that led to the footage being not, not good, let's put it that way. So the following segments of the video might seem a little disjointed because you know I'm talking about it as if you're gonna see the original footage. What I did was I made this scribe because though I have sc several scratch offs from woodworking and several scribes from metalworking, I don't really like any of them. Um, what I don't like about a lot of my metalworking ones are one, they're just, they're crap. <laughs> they're import, they were cheap. I mean, five or 10 bucks, you can buy these at the local big box store. But the tips are carbide. And some of them, they're crappy carbide. I've actually chipped them. And I've got a couple that actually do have good carbide in them, but they're a pain in the butt to home because it's carbide. I've got, and I've just got little diamond hones in my shop. And what ends up happening is inevitably after a couple of, a couple of honings, I end up getting some kind of facet. You know, when you're scribing along a line, along a rule, you know, if it twists in your finger or something, the facet moves, and all of a sudden your line's not straight anymore, which is, you know, it's annoying. And then for the woodworking ones, pretty much every one of them that I have is of this style. You know, a long cylindrical body and a super long tip. And the problem with this, in my opinion, is if you grip it back here where you got a, a big enough circumference or a big enough diameter part to grip on, you're too far away from the tip to get a nice accurate feel. And if you grip it way down here by the tip, you're gripping such a small diameter, it's a pain. Hence the reason I made this one, because to me, this feels really good in my hand. I can get real close to the tip, and since this is just a high-speed steel drill blank, I could replace the whole thing for like $1.50, or I can just resharpen it by just going over to the grinder. So, again, I apologize for any disjointedness that you might experience, and the rest of the video will be making this scribe. So I lied. We're going to start over here at the grinder and grind the tip of the drill blank. Just going to do that here on the CBN wheel, just because it's the one out here and it's easiest to get to. Just a cordless drill with the drill blank chucked up in it. And I have the drill rotating in the opposite direction to the grinding wheel, which is important. Since it's high speed steel, you can't really get it too hot, but... That looks good to me. I'll take this over to the bench and I'll clean it up real quick so with some emery paper and some other abrasives. So, I've got the 5C chuck mounted in the lathe. I've got a piece of bar stock in it. And what I'm gonna do is make the threaded portion of the tip. So the first step is to turn down a three eighths of an inch long section to a few thousandths under a quarter inch so that I can thread it. And actually this is the first time I've worked with this type of bronze, so we'll see how this goes. I've got a stop set already, so just to get a full cut here, I'm just feeding it by hand because I've already got the lead screw set up for the threading. So that's down to the size I wanted, so now it's time to set up for the threading. Everything's set up. I got a little relief cut at the back of the thread. We'll see how this goes.
parting tool here and clean that up behind the thread so I can bottom the nut out. Should really disengage the gear train. What did I do with that? So I cleaned it up a little bit, it still looks kind of gnarly, but I'm going to go in here and chamfer the, the tip. Well, so try the... Uh, quarter 20 nut one more time. Goes on just fine. Bottoms out good, but just doesn't look very good to me anyway. So hopefully it'll tap better than it threaded. So the next step is to actually I do with the check key, there we go. Loosen this up, pull it out and part it off because we'll finish it later. Take one last check here, and yeah, it's actually way longer than it needs to be. I have 30 seconds, and it should clear. Go ahead and part this off. And there we go. Let me clean this up and I'll set up for the next stop. Get the compound out of the way here. I can. Drill and tap everything. Thank you. 
So according to my drawings, this hole needs to be three quarters of an inch deep. What am I got this set at? 620, that should be fine. just started to drill at the full width all the way out so let me zero the uh, dial on the back of the compound here and then we should be ready to go should be three quarters of an inch. Now it's time to tap. One of the reasons I'm, uh, I drilled this and I'm going to tap this so deep is all I have is a spiral point bit, or sorry, spiral point tap. So what I really needed was a bottoming cap, but I don't have one of those in quarter 20, so I'll just drill the hole deeper and tap it. Okay, so after a lot of putzing around with the tap and the die, which really isn't going to be of any interest to anyone else but me, I got this so that it goes on pretty well. So now the next step is to face this to length, the, uh, the tip I mean. I've got to take 71 thousandths off the end, I just measured it, and then i got to put the taper on it. Okay, should be back now. Had a little technical malfunction, ran the... Uh, flash drive on the camera completely out of memory so hopefully I didn't miss much but um, I've got the tip face to length it's on here pretty good I actually had to get a pair of little vice grips and gnaw it a little bit but since I'm gonna taper it after the fact that's not a big deal um, so right now I'm going to center drill then uh, run a clearance hole all the way through run a slightly bigger drill all the way through to get it super close because I'm only gonna leave um, I think like four or five thousandths on the diameter before I ream it because this is such a small hole so you can't use the standard, you know, leave a 64th because that's a lot considering it's only a 9 32nd reamer. So, oh, let me check the speed. Do I have that set to? Yeah, that's good. 620. Should be good to go.
so it helps if I lock down the tail stock. Again, since this is such a small drill, I gotta back it out quite often to clear the flutes. I may be getting a, a sixteenth of an inch with each with each peck before it feels like it uh, loads up. to get it close the size before I ream. just have to, to ream the hole so put the drill bit away switch out to the reamer and then I will drop the um, RPM down as far as my lathe will go which in, for my lathe is 125 RPMs might want to recommend if you are using something this size maybe you want to ream it half a thousandths or a thousandths oversized because I mean that goes in nice and 
I mean, there's still almost, there's no play. But right on size was not good in bronze, but my brass test pieces, and I actually did do two of them, um, was perfect. So keep that in mind. Half a thousand to a thousand oversize potentially. So next step is to turn the taper on the front. That's just aesthetics and a feel thing. I think this is going to be the final pass. Uh, maybe not, I think I'm going to take a little bit more off, maybe another 10 off the radius, so 20 off the diameter. Maybe seven. Let's take, let's take seven. Just shy of the 64. so it's not razor sharp. Just a little one. Like that. The last drill process I have to do is actually take a, let me get it out here, a 1 8 inch drill bit, which is bigger than the, uh, the tip, or I should say the drill blank, and then run that hole all the way down through the center of the body as deep as I can because that's what's going to allow for the storage area when the when the scribe's not in use. So let me let me get all this stuff out of the way here real quick. Stock down. Yeah, what am I? What speed am I at? Okay. So I should just be able to. This should actually be fairly easy, hopefully, because so far this bronze has been a lot harder to work with than I thought it would be.
getting close, maybe a quarter inch to go. A little bit more. One more pass should do it, hopefully. clean this up and come back for the next step on the body. Okay, so what I've decided to do was, I've gotten it apart, I might have already told you guys that. Um, I played with it a little bit and it's too long based on my original design and I'm not going to get all these little nicks and stuff out because this bar's just been in the shop too long and it's been beat up. So I'm going to take it from 3 8 down to 11 30 seconds, which is the next you know, 30 second size down, which is the size that will fit my collet, so I can turn it around and do stuff to the back of the, the body. So that's what I'm going to do here. I've got it mounted, this end mounted in a collet, this end mounted up against a, I guess they call it a CNC center, I think is what, I think I, when I purchased it, what, what they labeled it. But basically it's just got a fine tip so I can get in here real close. So, and again, I don't have the, um, can I get the whole way down? Yeah, yeah, okay. And I don't have um, feet engaged because I don't feel like undoing the, the screws right now. Or sorry, undoing the, uh, the gears right now and resetting it up. So I'm gonna try this by hand. If it doesn't come out that well, I will switch the gears back. So we'll see how it goes. Touch off right here. Five thousand, ten thousand total. Not bad so far. See how it is when we got here in the middle of the body. for the body is to put a nice decorative um, taper on the back and then chamfer the last little bit of it. So I'll do that now.
going to readjust this here because the tailstock is, or the, sorry, the compound is awfully stiff right at the moment. Yeah, that's much easier. I think another five off the radius, ten off the diameter, I think that'll be it. over to the uh, chamfering tool and I'll so I've gone ahead and switched back to my three jaw and I've cleaned up the mess I've made and the last piece I have to make is what I'm going to call the bushing that goes on the, the actual cutter. So what this does is when I drilled the hole for the quarter twenty screw that the, the tip would screw into, I went down further than I needed to. And then I, you know, I put that eighth of an inch hole further down through. So what this does is when this is Loctited on, that's all it really is, is Loctited. The bottom of this will go down and rest against that the, the bottom of the hole essentially. And then the, the part of this the extra bit of the cutter will go down that um, storage hole. I guess we can call it a storage hole. And then when you thread the tip down the body, it comes down and locks against the front of the bushing. And when you have the bushing size just to the right length, essentially your the cutter can't move forward or back. So it locks it down nice and tight. You don't have any play in it. And that's what I need to make right now. So what I need to do is take this bar down to 3 16 and then I need to drill it and ream it so that the cutter will go through and then I need to cut about an inch of it off. One thing I don't like about small drills, all the hex essentially you have to make. I get maybe a sixteenth of an inch. this off, bring it down to length, and then I'll bring you guys back when I'm ready for the final assembly. Okay guys, so here it is. 
As you can see, I uh, sized the brass keeper to the appropriate length and Loctite it fast to the cutter. And then I've gone and cleaned up the body and the tip. So there's two ways this goes together. Um, where for when you're storing it, you want to take the, excuse me, you know, basically put it in backwards into the tip and then just run it down into the body. Lock it down so there, you know, you can put it in your pocket or light in a, a drawer or something and, you know, you're not going to stick yourself in any way. When you're ready to use it, you just flip the cutter around, push it in. And you're ready to go. I mean, I size this for my hand. You can make it longer, bigger, I mean, bigger in diameter, smaller in diameter. Basically, the sky's the limit on this because all you really need is drill bits and one of those high-speed steel tool, um, drill bit blanks. And you can make this to any size and shape you want.